talk is called The Gate, The Voice, and The Mirror. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself as a student. Uh, when I started getting uh, my acceptance letters from universities, my mom confessed to me that uh, she thought maybe I was dreaming a little bit too big, that, that maybe uh, I was out over my skis a little bit here, and um, that maybe the system that, that I was looking to kind of break into wasn't kind of ready for a kid like me. I was a first generation kid from the Central Valley, and, and she had experienced biases uh, in, in her experience coming to the United States. Now, that was kind of a shock to me because growing up, that wasn't the message that necessarily that had given me. I had uh, believed that basically I could do whatever I wanted. Uh, as long as I worked hard, uh, those opportunities would be there for me. I had awesome teachers, an awesome support system. But the thing that I think troubles me uh, probably more now than I did then is that those kinds of opportunities weren't always there for other students like me. Uh, and so I think the big question here is in, in our educational system, are we teaching or are we sorting? Uh, and I think the hard thing for us that we have to confront is that math is usually the biggest weapon in that sorting process. Uh, if you have the teacher on that last slide, you probably don't have a lot of students that look like this. Um, hopefully we do have students that see mathematics as something that's kind of amazing. It's like Charlie uh, getting that golden, or uh, excuse me, uh, Charlie Bucky getting the, the golden ticket there. Um, they, the students need our support, they need us to kind of uh, connect all of those ideas together and hopefully uh, the gate that is being crossed isn't necessarily the one that kind of allows them in, that's not the only one, but also the one that allows us into their hearts and minds. Um, one thing that Math has taught me is that math makes a lot of things that were once impossible, possible. Uh, here's a list of things that, at some point in history, people thought were kind of ridiculous or, or not, it, we weren't able to do anything uh, with. Uh, this is Lily Tomlin, I love this quote. Uh, Rochelle Gutierrez has this, this idea that math needs people and, and the diversity of ideas that come with people sharing all of these big ideas. If, if our math classes have a bias that kind of pulls some people out, are we allowing all of those voices to be heard? Which brings us to this. Uh, here we have the choir, right? This is, these are all the people here that, that really kind of get it. Uh, and there's all these folks that, that aren't here. Uh, are we sharing our voices with them? We're all looking for solutions to the same problem. Uh, are we sharing what our solutions are? We're all kind of looking for those answers in our own classes. Um, I think it's important that we share what we have in our hearts, uh, that we share, that we allow the students to connect their own hearts to their classrooms. Um, and then, Looking at these two situations, uh, which one looks more like the traditional classroom? Which one looks more like your classroom? Uh, which one allows for students' discourse? Uh, which one allows for the students to actually kind of have a direct link access to the mathematics? And I think along with voice, there's this really important notion of listening. Uh, what is it that we're hearing from each other? Are we really listening to each other or just kind of talking. Uh, to me, the math community has been extremely accepting and open, and it's been kind of amazing just to find myself up here, actually. Uh, my last little metaphor is the mirror. Um, the mirror uh, is one of the things that I hear a lot from teachers that they get to go into each other's classrooms is that, hey, the students do exactly what we tell them. So if that's true, why do we always say things like, well, they're not going to be able to, or they can't, or they won't? Uh, I think it's, it's important to kind of recognize that when you look at your students, do we recognize our own reflections? Uh, because our students really just kind of reflect back what, what we're giving them. So I'll tell you guys a little bit of, of a story of a student that I had named Nick. Uh, Nick was an awesome kid. Uh, he was surprised his previous teacher because he was like, well, I can't believe he's thriving so long in your class. I was like, yeah, he's a great kid doing a lot of really cool, cool stuff. He was taking an exam in my class and was really stumped on one of those classic algebra problems where you have one plane going one way, another one going the other way. How long before they... So he was really struggling, kind of puzzling over this problem, but he wasn't quitting, which I was really happy about. And so as other kids kind of gave up and turned to their test, I kind of walked over to Nick and I was really pleased to see him draw this. But eventually he kind of busted out his eraser as soon as I walked up to him. And, and I was like, what, what are you doing? He's like, is, can I not do this? And, then, and so I, I kind of recognized at that moment that even though I thought I had been communicating to him uh, certain things about what I believed about teaching, maybe that wasn't always the case. So I felt like I, at that point I still had work to do. Uh, and so hopefully uh, with that, uh, you guys will all kind of recognize the metaphor and think about how that applies to you. And thank you all very much for your time.